Hi, I'm Julie Tam, managing broker of Lynn Realty. Welcome to Smarter Real Estate, my weekly Wednesday video series, arming you with practical strategies to make you a smarter buyer, seller, or landlord. And actually, I miss Renter in there. Anyway, um, these are done in one take and not edited, obviously. And I also take you on some of my real estate adventures. Today, I get to be in the passenger seat of my car. My husband's actually driving. We are out to different properties, shooting photos and video tours. And he's got the COVID-19 pandemic beard going on. Um, he's actually shaved a lot of times. But anyway, it, it's, uh, it keeps coming back for some reason. Um, I want to give you an update on the current status of real estate in the greater Houston area. Um, and as we are seeing in other parts of the country as well, the markets have really heated up. Uh, people are on the move. They are moving for various reasons. Some people citing that they're, they feel their space is uh, too small or they want to move out to the suburbs so they can social distance better rather than being kind of in these urban, more congested areas, especially if they're in a apartment or condo building or other sort of setup uh, where homes are very close by. Um, and some are wanting to have a bigger space for a home office. Um, because they're having to work from home and some people um, actually need to downsize and go to something less expensive because they're having financial difficulties. So we're kind of seeing everything across the board. Um, some questions people are having now are, for example, if you are a seller uh, or a tenant who has been diagnosed with COVID-19, do you have to disclose that to a potential buyer or renter who is going to come to the property? Um, and the answer is yes, because there is a question, for example, on the seller's disclosure when you're going to sell the property um, that asks if there's anything that will materially negatively affect someone's health or safety of a future buyer. Uh, and then, of course, from the tenant side, the property manager or the landlord should be notified. So that way, the, there are precautions that can be taken, uh, some extra cleaning measures, for example. Um, but of course, if the landlord or the property manager doesn't know, then they're not going to be aware and therefore will not be able to inform the next tenant. So the right thing to do is go ahead and disclose, disclose, disclose. Uh, whenever possible. Um, the other question is as far as buyers, uh, if you can request that the seller deep clean and do an extra you know, disinfecting, sanitizing of the property, um, whether or not the seller had COVID-19. And the answer to that is that the seller, uh, it's optional. Uh, the seller doesn't have to, um, but they can agree to in the contract if they want to. Um, and of course, if the seller doesn't agree to do that, then the buyer should go ahead and delay their move in um, after closing to give some time for that cleaning. As the CDC and the WHO have reported, um, COVID-19 can survive in the air and on surfaces for anywhere from hours to days. And so you really do want to delay that move in, even if you want to let the virus naturally die off on its own after some time. Um, one other thing I want to update you on is in the um, rental and property management world. So courts are evicting tenants. Um, we are seeing some tenants taking advantage of the situation. Um, once you know we send a vacate notice um, or an eviction uh, notice that we filed eviction in court and the court sends out that notice that the tenants suddenly are able to come up with large sums of money. Uh, so you don't want to do that as a tenant, taking advantage of landlords. Some landlords are um, just individuals who rely on rental income as either their sole or primary source of income. Uh, and some of them are retirees and they are on fixed incomes. And so I think there's a common misperception, uh, misconception, excuse me, where tenants think that landlords are these wealthy, you know, overlords that can just let them stay for free. And I would say that, you know what, grocery stores are not giving you free groceries. Um, Pharmacies are not giving you free medicines. Those are essentials and housing is essential. And so the right thing to do is pay for what you are um, using, which is a, a home, which is a huge you know, thing that you're being given is the opportunity to live in a home. Um, and so if you need to work out a payment plan um, with your landlord or property manager, uh, talk to them, give specifics, uh, let them know what you can pay, uh, how much and how often. Uh, because that type of good faith effort is going to go a long way rather than just uh, being vague and saying that you're going to pay at some point uh, because that's just not going to cut it, unfortunately. All right. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe and like me on YouTube and Facebook and feel free to reach out with any comments or messages. Uh, and I hope to see you on a future episode of my Smarter Real Estate Weekly Wednesday video series. Have a great week and I'll see you next time.